Hello everyone. In this lecture video, we will discuss about the ideal turbo jet engine tutorial part. Myself, J. Murlidharan, Assistant Professor, Aeronautical Engineering Department. The problem is given that an ideal turbo jet flies at sea level at a Mach number of 0 0.75. It injects 74.83 kg per second of air and the compressor operates with a total pressure ratio of 15. The fuel has a heating value of 41,400 kJ per kg and the burner exit total temperature is 0.389 Kelvin. From this given value, well, we need to find out about the developed thrust and the TSFC, that is thrust to specific fuel consumption. We can also assume that the specific heat ratio is 1.40. Before elaborately to well, going to solve the problem, we need to understand the basic concepts of turbo jet engine. Here I have mentioned the components of turbo jet engine without considering the afterburner, that is non afterburner configuration. The first device is called the diffuser. The device diffuser is one which is used to increase the pressure and diffuses the velocity. Here I have mentioned it comes under the A201 process. The A is a static one and the 01 is a stagnation one. That is the static pressure and the static temperature which is transferred to stagnation temperature and stagnation pressure. Whenever the diffuser partially compresses the flow, it comes under the isentropic compression process. Now the next one is called 01 to 2, 02. It's a compressor. The compressor is a, is a device which is used to increase the stagnation pressure of the incoming air. So therefore the maximum amount of compression or the pressure has been increased is the compressor. So therefore it comes under the isentropic compression process. Okay. The next device is called the combustion chamber. The combustion chamber is a device which is used to burn the air as well as fuel with respect to the air to fuel ratio or the stoichiometric ratio. The combustion chamber comes under the constant pressure heat supply process. And the 0, 03 to 04 is a turbine. The main function of the turbine, which is used to produce the mechanical energy and to operate the compressor by connecting a single shaft between the turbine and the compressor. Also, the turbine, which is used to partially expand the flow from the combustion chamber. So therefore, it comes under the isentropic expansion process. The last device is called the nozzle. The nozzle is a device which is used to accelerate the flow as well as the maximum amount of expansion takes place in the nozzle. And then here I have mentioned 0, 04 to 5. That is the 0, 04 is a stagnation values and the 5 is a static values. That is the stagnation pressure and stagnation pressure temperature converted to the static pressure and the static pressure. The next one is called the TS diagram of a turbo jet engine. It's an ideal turbo jet uh, TS diagram uh, look like say an open Breton circuit. That is uh, in this diagram on the x axis we may consider entropy and y axis we have a temperature. The entropy is nothing like that. It's a ratio between the heat transfer that is change in heat transfer with respect to the observed temperature. The A201 is a diffuser. The diffuser which is used to partially increase the pressure. Therefore, whenever the pressure increases, your temperature also increases. But it comes under the isentropic process. Therefore, your entropy remains constant. Then 01 to 202 is a compressor. The maximum amount of compression has been takes place in the compressor, therefore the pressure and temperature are increased in 1 to 2. Here also the process comes under the isentropic, therefore your entropy remains constant. And 0, 02 to 0, 03 is a combustion chamber, it comes under the constant pressure process. Whenever the fuel, air and fuel are burned, your total temperature and the pressure of that particular compressor has been increased. So therefore, your entropy as well as the temperature also increased here. The 0, 02, 03 to 04 is a turbine which is used to partially expand the flow. Therefore, it comes under the isentropic process. Whether it comes under the isentropic 
So the entropy remains constant. And the 0, 4 to 5 is a nozzle. Also, the nozzle comes under the isentropic process. The maximum amount of expansion takes place in the nozzle. Therefore, the maximum amount of value has been placed in here. Also, it comes under the isentropic. As it comes under the isentropic, your entropy remains constant. Then, before we solve this problem, we have to uh, remind some basic concepts of thermodynamic relations. The first relation comes under the isentropic relation because other than the combustion chamber, we have the all, we have all the components under in the isentropic process. So therefore, first is that pressure temperature relation. Isentropically, your temperature ratio is equal to pressure ratio whole power gamma minus negative by gamma, or the pressure ratio is equal to the corresponding temperature ratio whole power gamma divided by gamma minus one. The gamma is nothing with that; it's a specific heat ratio or Cp divided by Cv. The next one is the relation between the stagnation to the static component. That how the stagnation component is connected to the static component. So what is the relation between the stagnation and the static one? That's what we may consider about the steady flow energy equation. We need to consider about the enthalpy and the dynamic pressure. That is P squared over 2. In the left hand side, we may consider the stagnation value. On the right hand side, we may consider about the static values. I just take care about that uh, enthalpy and the dynamic pressure in both sides. So that is what the stagnation, that is the left hand side, we have taken H0 plus C0 square by 2. The right hand side, I have taken H plus C square by 2. But practically, there is, C0, there is no C0 because it's not, it is not a stagnation come. That is what consider the C0 is equal to 0. The remaining equation becomes H0 is equal to H plus C square divided by 2. Again, thermodynamically, we know that H, that is the enthalpy, is equal to the product of specific heat at constant pressure into the in the absolute into absolute temperature. So therefore, H is equal to Cp into T. We may put the H is equal to Cp into T into the previous equation. We will get Cp into T naught is equal to Cp into T plus C square divided by 2. To simplify that uh, particular equation, we may divide this equation by Cp. We may and we will get T naught is equal to T plus C square divided by 2 Cp. That is your stagnation temperature is equal to that static plus the dynamic component value. Then coming to that Cp value, again thermodynamically we know that Cp is equal to gamma R divided by gamma minus 1. Therefore, we may put the Cp value into this previous equation. We will get T naught is equal to T plus gamma minus 1 divided by 2 into gamma R into C square. Again, to simplify this particular uh, equation, again we may go divide this equation by T. We will get T naught by T is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 into gamma RT into C square. Already we know that the Mach number is equal to C by root of gamma RT, that is velocity of the object by velocity of the sun. Then for simplification, we may consider the m square is equal to c square divided by gamma rt. By substituting this m square uh, c square divided by gamma rt value into the previous equation, we will get t naught by t is equal to 1 plus gamma minus divided by 2 into m square. Now coming to the problem, the data are given here is the ambient Mach number m a is equal to 0 0.75, the mass weight of air m a is equal to 74.83 kg, kg per second. The compressor pressure ratio, that is the P02 divided by P01 is 15. The burner exit temperature or the combustion chamber exit temperature P03 is equal to 1389 Kelvin. The heating value of fuel QR is equal to 41,400 kJ per kg and the specific heat ratio gamma is equal to 1.4. That is we solve the problem by taking the device by device. The first device A201 